Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here with our examples video for integration with U substitution. We've got seven examples we're going to work through in this video. We've got them all listed here. We're going to work them in this order. So if you see something in this list that you would like to skip ahead to and watch in particular, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, we're just going to work them in order and you can work along with us. Let's look at our first one here. We have the integral of e to the 5x dx. We've got a function of 5x inside of our exponential here. I don't want to let u equal the whole exponential itself because the derivative of an exponential is another exponential and I don't have a separate exponential in here. So a good choice for u substitution here would be that u is equal to 5x. And if I have u is equal to 5x, then that tells me du dx is equal to 5. Or the way we will write this for u substitution will actually say that du is equal to 5 dx, okay? So if we have u is equal to 5x, then this becomes u here, and we'll get e to the u. And the only thing that we need to replace then besides that is dx. So you look over here at your du statement. I don't have exactly dx. It's off by a constant multiple. So what I'll need to do is turn this into dx. Think of dividing both sides by 5 here. And so we'll actually get 1 fifth du, is equal to dx. So we'll have e to the u here, and this part here is actually going to be 1 fifth du. Okay, let's go ahead and make that replacement. Now I'm going to put my 1 fifth out front. So we'll say 1 fifth, because that's a constant multiple, right? We'll have e to the u, du, remember to put your du at the end, don't put it in front of the e to the u. And so this says basically we're integrating e to the u. And that's a really easy integral to do, right? We know the integral of e to the x or e to the u is itself, right? So we get 1 fifth e to the u here plus our constant, don't forget that part. And now we need to go back and replace our u, so we'll say 1 fifth Remember our u was 5x here, our original substitution, so we'll say 1 fifth e to the 5x plus some constant. We'll actually show you in one of our upcoming videos a shortcut for how to handle u substitution for just a constant multiple of something only. Let's look at number two here. We've got the integral of x e to the negative x squared dx. So if I look in here, notice I have a function inside my exponentials. I don't have a chain rule to deal with that. So my first guess is to make the inside of the exponential my u. I also see, think about if you take u to be negative x squared, the derivative of that is going to be some sort of an x term. And I have an x term out here. And we can deal with the constant multiple. That's no problem. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say u is equal to negative x squared here. That tells us then that du is equal to negative 2x dx, right? So remember, we think du dx, but then we really separate and move the dx to the other side. So I have u being negative x squared. That makes this part u in the exponent. What I have left over is x dx. So how do I turn my du statement here into x dx on this side? I would just need to divide both sides by negative 2. And so that would tell me then that negative 1 half du is equal to x dx. So this x dx part gets replaced with negative 1 half du. Let's go ahead and set that up. I'll go ahead and bump my negative 1 half out front of the integral because it's a constant multiple. So negative 1 half will have the integral of e to the u. And remember, this x was part of the x dx statement, so that just gives us the du, right? So here's my negative 1 half du, which was my x dx, and the rest was e to the u. Now, we get a similar statement from before, right? We know the antiderivative of e to the u is just itself, so we get negative 1 half e to the u plus our constant of integration. Once the integral is finished, then we go ahead and replace our u back in terms of x. So we say negative 1 half. Here we'll have e to the negative x squared is our u plus c. For our third example here, we have the integral of dx over the quantity x plus 1 all to the 4. Now remember that having dx on the top, this is really the same as saying 1 over the quantity x plus 1 all to the 4 and having dx out here. These are the same thing, this is just written a little bit differently. So however you prefer to think of this in your mind while you're working through it, that's fine. But both of these are the same, just recognize that. 
Okay, now I don't think I need to let u equal 1 on the top here, so my guess is something down here, x plus 1 to the 4. If I think about letting the entire denominator be u, I would have a chain rule which would give me lots of sort of fancy stuff from there. The 4 would come out, I'd get this thing cubed, so I'm not going to choose the entire denominator for this one. What I'm going to choose is actually just u equals the x plus 1 part. Another reason that's a good choice for u is, what is the derivative of x plus 1? Well, it's just 1, and we have that up here, right? So this is exactly what we would need to do that, right? So if u is x plus 1, then we'll go ahead and say du is equal to 1 dx, right? Or, we don't really need the 1, I guess, right? You could just say du is equal to dx, and that's a fine way to think of it, right? So if we go in here, then we can say this is just going to be du, and all of this down here is just going to be u to the 4 on the bottom, right? So if we rewrite what we have, that will be the integral of du over u to the 4. Now remember, over u to the 4, this is actually going to be a power rule. So this is the same as saying u to the negative 4 power du. So we can use the power rule to do this, right? That says the power goes up by 1, so we get u to the negative 3. We divide by the new power, negative 3, we'll get our plus c, right? And so now how can I write this? Well, let's write this a little bit different. So first of all, let's write negative 1 third. And then where is this u to the minus 3? Well, it's down below, right? So we have a 3 in the bottom from our negative 1 third, and then this is actually u cubed in the denominator, right? Because we have a negative power there. So we get 1 over 3 u cubed plus c. Now let's go ahead and substitute back in terms of x here. So this u cubed will actually get negative 1 over 3 times the quantity x plus 1 all cubed plus our constant. Looking at the next one here, we have the integral of 2x over the square root of 3x squared minus 1 dx when I look at this, I see a couple of things. First of all, I notice that I have a square here, and I have an x term here, and the derivative of a square term would be an x term, so something down here is probably a good choice for you. Now, I don't have a chain rule, remember, so if I just choose part of inside of the root to be u, then I still have u minus 1, for example, in the root, and that still would require some kind of a chain rule, right? When we have a function inside of another operation. So we don't just want to choose this one term inside of the root. We actually want to choose everything inside of the root. So we'll say 3x squared minus 1 for our u. And that doesn't mess up the top being some multiple of the derivative of what we chose, right? Because what is the derivative of negative 1? Well, negative 1 is just a constant, so the derivative is 0, and so we'll just get some sort of an x term out of this du here, right? So if we take the derivative of this, we'll actually get 6x. Remember, we'll write the dx on this side. So we have 6x dx is du. So think about what we have. All of this stuff in the root here is going to be our u, right? So on the bottom, we have square root u. On the top, we have 2x dx, right? So I want to see what is 2x dx exactly. How do I turn 6x dx into 2x dx? I would divide it by 3. And so I would actually get 1 third du is equal to 2x dx. Okay, so I know exactly now that this right here is actually one-third du. So let's go ahead and make our replacement. I'll go ahead and bump the one-third out front. It's a constant multiple. We can do that. One-third integral of, now this becomes du, right? So there's the rest of my 2x dx. There's the one-third du that we said we were going to get from this just with the one-third bumped out front over, and we said all of this was going to become square root u. Now we want to recognize over square root u as a power, so we really want to see this as one-third integral of u to the negative one-half du, right? Square root means one-half power, and since it's in the denominator, it's a negative power. So we have one-third integral u to the negative one-half du. We'll keep our one-third, and now power rule says the power goes up by one, so we get u to the one-half and then divide by the new power means divide by one-half, right? Plus c. 
But now what is divide by one half really? Well, let's make it multiply by reciprocal instead. So we're gonna actually think of this as one third times two over one, right? Instead of divide by one half, u to the one half plus c. Now let's go ahead and clean up this answer. We're almost there. One third times two over one, so we'll get two thirds in the front u to the one half, think about this would be square root u, but let's replace our u, right? So u was all of this stuff, 3x squared minus 1, so let's put that in a square root, plus our c, right? So this is 2 thirds, this is our u to the one half, and we have our plus constant on the end. Looking at our number five here, the integral of sine x, cosine x, dx, we're going to actually show you, you could work this two different ways. So one way to look at this is to say, ah, the derivative of sine x is cosine x exactly. So I could say u is equal to sine x, and then the derivative of that, du, is going to be cosine x, dx and we get this being exactly u and all of this being exactly du. So we would just get the integral of u du. And just like the integral of x dx, that's really easy to do, right? Think of this like u to the one and do a power rule. So the power goes up by one and divide by the new power. So we'll get one half u squared plus c. And if we substitute back in terms of x, remember our u was sine x, so this answer would actually be one half sine of x all squared, the way we write that is sine squared x plus c, and that would be our answer. So that's one way to do that. Another way to do this is going to actually be, think about now, if I chose u to be cosine x, the derivative of cosine x is not exactly sine x, but it is just off by a constant multiple. So technically I should be able to do that as well, right? So another way to do this integral is to say u is equal to cosine x. And then du is actually what? It's actually negative sine x dx. So think about what we would actually get now over here. If u is cosine x, so this is my u right here, what I have left is sine x dx, right? So sine x dx, I need to figure out what to put in for that. Over here I have negative sine x dx, so if I multiply or divide both sides by negative one, then the substitution I want to use maybe is negative du is sine x dx. So then over here we can see what goes in for sine x dx is actually negative du. So we will end up actually getting the integral of negative u du if we do this substitution. So think about what we have here. You could bump the negative out if you want. So you could say negative integral of u du. That's just a negative one, right? So we can bump the constant multiple out. Same power rule though, right? This is u to the one. So we'll go ahead and bump up the power by one and divide by that new power. So we get negative one half u squared plus a constant. And if we sub back in terms of u this time, our u was cosine x. So for this one, if we had done it this way, we actually get negative one half cosine squared x plus some constant. And you'll see that if you went back and graphed these, you would actually get the same thing. They might be off by a constant, the constants might be different, but the exact same shape of the graph, they would just be vertical translations from one another. So in this particular example, you could actually do two different choices for your u, and the u substitution would work out to some sort of integral that you could do. That's not going to happen all the time, but it does happen occasionally. Let's look at our next example here. Now I have sine x on the top of a fraction and I have cosine cubed x on the bottom of the fraction. So we have that integral dx. So one beware with this one, we can't actually do this substitution both ways just because we have a sine and a cosine function. If I let u equal sine x, which is not what we want to do, but just showing you why this doesn't work. If u is sine x, then we know certainly that du is cosine x dx. Now here's the problem. I have cosine cube x, and I don't want du in the bottom of a fraction, right? We don't ever, when we have our integral, divide by du. This is really technically this fraction times this differential dx, right? We don't have divide by dx when we do integrals. So we don't want to ever make a substitution where du is going to end up on the bottom of the fraction. 
So we're going to go ahead and say that is not the best thing to do. We want to choose what's on the bottom to be our u. So I'm going to choose u to be cosine x. And now think about what the bottom would become, right? That would become u cubed, right? So making a note here, this would be u cubed down here. So now if our u is cosine x, just remember that our du is actually going to be negative sine x dx here. So we have sine x dx that we want to replace. We're off by a negative sign here. So we could change this and we could say negative du is equal to positive sine x dx. And now I know that this is going to be replaced with negative du, right? So let's go ahead and write down what we have. So this negative, I'll go ahead and bump it out. That's like a negative one, right? So negative in the front. I have du left on the top and I have u cubed left on the bottom. This will be a power rule, right? If we have du over u cubed, so I have a negative out front, that's the same as saying u to the negative three du. So we'll use the power rule for this, keeping my negative out front, being careful with that. So if we add one to the power, that will be u to the negative two, dividing by the new power would give us negative two in the bottom. We'll have our constant of integration plus c. And now think about what we have. This is a negative one. This really on the bottom negative two is actually negative one half. So we actually get a positive one half. And then this u to the negative two, that's actually going to be one over whatever u was squared, right? So that'll actually be one over cosine x all squared, which we'll call cosine squared x plus our c. Now we could go ahead and just put these together, right, and say 1 over 2 cosine squared x. If we have cosine squared x in the denominator, think about that's like the reciprocal of something else, right? So we could actually write this as 1 half secant squared x plus c. And our last one here, we have the integral of ln x over x dx. This one, once you see it, I think this is okay. If you look at this and you go, hmm, ln x, well, what's the derivative of ln x? Well, it's one over x. And if you see it right away, then you've got it. But if you don't see it, then we just have to kind of break this apart, right? So what we really want to think of this as, think of we've got ln of x, and this over x here is really like saying the same thing as times one over x, right? dx. So this is really the same thing as this. And now maybe you see if u is the natural log of x, what is the derivative of the natural log function? Well, it's 1 over x, right? So du is actually going to be 1 over x dx. So if we can see this ln of x over x dx as ln of x times 1 over x dx, then it's not so bad, right? So if we think about here, our ln x is actually going to be our u. And this dx over x part is really like 1 over x dx, then this is just going to be our du. So we just get integral of u du. And as long as we can sort of see how to break that up, then that one's not so bad, right? So think of this like u to the 1. And so power go up by 1, we'll divide by the new power, so we'll get 1 half u squared, just a power rule, plus c. We'll go ahead and replace our u. Our u was ln of x. Now, when we have powers of log functions, one thing you might not have seen before this point in your calculus is that when we have powers of logs, we don't actually put ln of x in parentheses usually and put a power outside. We actually write them like we have powers of trig functions when we say like cosine squared x. So here we would actually say ln squared of x. And that's really saying to us, we have all of ln x squared. All right, everyone, next up in our video series, we have examples involving U substitution with definite integrals and dealing with bounds of integration when you have U substitution. Check that out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you then.